Knee pads are considered by most cavers to be a fundamentally critical piece of gear. Although very uncommon, I've met a few cavers that don't use them or use extremely minimalist options because they aren't comfortable and the caves they typically visit don't have a lot of crawling. However, I've met a multitude of older experienced cavers who did this when they were younger and they almost always have regrets for not taking better care of their knees. Knee problems are one of the main reasons many cavers quit the sport or scale back their involvement and many of these knee issues can be mitigated by wearing appropriate protection. The choice of what knee pads to use is a very personal one. Differences in what clothing is worn, the shape of the leg, the type of cave passages that will be encountered, individual comfort standards, and even the crawling style of each caver vary significantly. Most cavers have a favorite knee pad, but because of these many variables, there definitely is not a consensus about the best option for all cavers in all situations. Something almost all cavers do agree on is that no knee pad is as comfortable as we would like or stays in place in all circumstances. Cavers are fortunate to have a wide selection of knee pads that are designed specifically for caving. There are also a number of options that are designed for other activities. Sports such as volleyball, skating, mountain biking, and snowboarding sometimes require knee pads. Tactical military uses and some construction activities such as roofing and flooring also utilize knee pads. The volleyball, skate, and construction knee pads are more widely available from places like Walmart, Home Depot, or Amazon, and many cavers use these because of the better availability and often low price. The trade-off is usually worse protection, reduced comfort, or poor durability. Most non-caving, sports-oriented pads are designed for occasional impact protection rather than for regular sustained use, and they usually consist of an elastic sleeve with padding sewn onto the front of the sleeve. If using this type of pad for caving, then they generally need to be put on before putting on boots and are left on for the duration of the cave trip. And due to the lack of adjustability and low durability, most cavers wear these underneath pants or cave suits. These pads are designed to protect the kneecap from impacts, so the padded area is usually fairly short and doesn't protect the area just below the knee or further down the shin. Besides the advantages of good availability and low cost, they may be preferred by some in caves without many crawls due to the smaller size and lower profile. I have used them successfully in large caves such as Lechaguilla, Watla, Cheve, and Clearwater that have very little crawling. If using them over the top of pants or with shorts, then it's a good idea to add some protection to the outer fabric by applying something like Plasti Dip or Aqua Seal. Many of the military or construction style knee pads use a pair of elastic straps to hold them in place so they can be put on or taken off without removing boots. These tend to have thicker padding and adjustable straps, which makes them better suited for being worn over the top of pants or cave suits. Many versions of this type of knee pad have a plastic or rubber cap, but I don't recommend these for caving. Part of the function of a knee pad when crawling or climbing is to provide traction over various surfaces such as mud, sediment, cobbles, or bedrock. Even the softest rubber-capped knee pads tend to skate around on many surfaces found in caves. Pads with a simple durable fabric covering such as Cordura gives the best traction, lowest bulk, and are more likely to mold to the shape of the knee with use. Knee pads designed specifically for caving are made by Onrope One, Cave Legs, Crawl Daddies, Gonzo Guano Gear, Dirty Daves, Salamander Gear, PMI, Langeoff, and Warmback. These many options can be roughly divided into two types, short pads that cover the knee and long pads that also cover much of the shin. The choice of a short or long pad is very much up to individual taste. I have very large calves and when I crawl I tend to lift and place my legs rather than drag them, so I haven't found a need for shin protection and most of the longer pads don't fit me well. <laughs> by contrast, I have many friends who swear by long pads and would suffer much more discomfort and additional bruises without padding on their lower legs. Almost all of the caving specific knee pads have straps that allow them to be put on or taken off without removing boots and they are designed to be worn over the top of pants or cave suits. A few models have elastic neoprene sleeves that require sliding them on over the leg so boots must be removed. Short pads typically have two straps, one above the knee and one below. Long pads generally include a third strap to secure the bottom of the shin. Straps vary a lot between models in width, elasticity, and method of attachment to the pad. Some designs certainly perform better than others, but they all shift out of position at times and they all chafe the back of the leg. Many straps use plastic buckles for either attachment or adjustment, and these are usually pretty durable, but have been known to break. 
Many types of plastic adjustment buckles have a tendency to allow the strap to loosen over time. If this is a chronic issue, then you can adjust the strap to the desired length and then run a line of stitches through both sides. This will prevent the strap from slipping, but a single row of stitches can be easily pulled out if an adjustment becomes necessary. There are also many straps that use Velcro for adjustment and fastening. These work well as long as you don't open them and allow them to get muddy during a trip. The padding type and thickness varies a lot between models. The most common padding is half-inch neoprene closed cell foam. This type and thickness of padding is adequate for most caves and is a good balance between bulk and protection. Neoprene foam is reasonably soft but also resilient and will conform to the shape of your knee after a couple of trips. The foam used in some models of pads is slightly less resilient and will compress and provide less protection over time. A few models, such as the Howitzers and Dirty Daves, can be opened, allowing the padding to be replaced or additional padding to be added, which allows some customization. Aside from dedicated knee pads, there are also pants such as Carhartts and some models of cave suits that have pockets in front that allow the insertion of a pad. This adds a little bulk to the cave suit but this is one way of adding padding without the discomfort of straps that run behind the knee. The trade-offs are that the cave suit takes most of the wear and tear rather than a less expensive pad, and the padding usually moves around a lot and can move out of position so that it isn't providing protection. This type of padding pocket is common in pants designed for the construction industry, and as a result, you can find a variety of pads for this purpose on Amazon. If you want to cut your own padding, make your own knee pads, or replace worn padding in existing knee pads, then you can also order rolls of foam padding from Amazon. Search for neoprene sponge foam rubber, which is available in various thicknesses. The half-inch material, without an adhesive backing, is a good option for most caving applications. Some cavers will cut neoprene from an old wetsuit, but this usually requires two to three layers. I'll be doing reviews on a variety of popular caving knee pads in the coming months. For a comparison of knee pad features such as cost, strap attachment and adjustment type, padding thickness, and sizing options, head over to my website at DerekBristol.com and check out the caving gear section.